Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to perform cloud masking using the quality band in Google Earth Engine. We'll specifically look at masking Landsat and Sentinel-2 TOA data, but you can apply these techniques to any dataset that includes a quality band. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more short and conceptual Google Earth Engine tutorials. Let's get started. I've loaded my study area polygon along with a cloudy Landsat 8 TOA image into Google Earth Engine. If you're unsure how to filter images in Google Earth Engine, make sure to click on the card above. The quality band is available in various image collections, such as Landsat, Sentinel-2, and Modis within Google Earth Engine. Let's begin by examining the dataset description. In the band section, you'll find the QA pixel band. This is a binary band, meaning each pixel is assigned a value of either 0 or 1, which the computer can easily process. There are specific bitmasks set up for different features like cirrus clouds, regular clouds, cloud shadows, snow, and surface water, among others. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're focusing on clouds and their shadows. Specifically, bit 3 corresponds to clouds, and bit 4 represents cloud shadows. Next, we need to convert the binary values to decimal. To achieve this, we'll perform a left shift operation. The double less than signs represent a left shift. Specifically for clouds, we'll use a shift value of 3, which translates to the number 8 in an 8-bit system, since Landsat images are 8-bit data in Google Earth Engine. For cloud shadows, we'll first create a variable to store the decimal value. If you print this variable, you'll see that clouds have a value of 8, and shadows have a value of 16 in decimal. Now let's select the QA pixel band, which is in binary format. To extract the cloud mask from the QA pixel band, we'll apply the bitwise A end binary image operator to the image. The bitwise A end operator helps in extracting the relevant pixels. When you visualize this binary mask on the map, you'll notice that for clouds, the minimum value is 0 and the maximum is 8. Next, we need to invert this mask because we want to clip our image using the cloud mask. You can do this in two ways, either by using the EQ operator to assign a value of 0, or by directly using the NOT operator. I'll use the latter method. I'll repeat the same process for cloud shadows as well. After that, we need to combine these two masks into a single mask. While you can choose to use either one to clip your image, I've decided to combine both. While recording this tutorial, I forgot to invert the cloud shadow mask, so make sure to invert it correctly in your script. Finally, we'll clip this image using the update mask method and visualize it on the map. To make this process reusable, we can create a function. This is especially helpful if we need to apply it to other images or an image collection. I'll simply copy and paste the script, and within this function, we will return the image. Additionally, I'm using the copy properties method to retain the metadata. In my case, I'm copying the system time start property, but you can copy other properties as well. Initially, I encountered an error because we need to inform Google Earth Engine that this is an image. To resolve this, in the return statement, we'll encapsulate the image with ee.image. If you don't copy properties when working with a large set of images, you won't be able to identify the date of each image, since the function only returns the image without its metadata, specifically the date. For image collection, you can map this function. I have another video in which I explained mapping functions in Google Earth Engine. You can use this function for Landsat 8 and 9 TOA and surface reflectance products, 
as they have the same bit masks for clouds and cloud shadows. Next, I'll apply the same process to Sentinel-2 data. I'll start by filtering and visualizing the Sentinel-2 Level 1C product. Sentinel-2 includes a quality band called QA60. This time, I'll create a function directly. In Sentinel-2, bit 10 represents opaque clouds, and bit 11 stands for cirrus clouds. Feel free to explore other bit masks as well. I'll combine these masks, clip the image using them, and then visualize the result on the map. I will also scale the Sentinel-2 bands inside the function by multiplying with the scaling factor. Scaling factor convert the TOA reflectance values into floating points. This is done by Google as integers takes less space compared to floats. Majority of the datasets on GEE have scaling factors. Please don't confuse scaling factors with multiplicative and additive factors, we'll explain them in another video. For now, keep in mind it is super important to scale the bands. For Sentinel-2 TOA or surface reflectance, it's dividing the bands by 10,000 or multiplying with 0 0.0001. Additionally, Sentinel-2 offers other useful products such as the scene classification SCL band. Link to that in video description. We also have the S2 cloudless image collection and the Sentinel-2 cloud score plus. I will cover them in another video. Stay tuned for upcoming tutorials on these topics. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next video.